Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And we're gonna talk about Disney, ABC, Hollywood, and this diversity and inclusion push. It's gotten to a place now where uh, Disney executive Dana Walden, who is the chairman of entertainment for Walt Disney Television, has come out and said they passed on some very good scripts, some very good pitches, because they weren't diverse enough. And this isn't the first time that we've had this, this we've heard this. We, I know there was, uh, you said Dolph Lundgren and Sylvester yeah, Stallone had yeah. had a show and they passed on it because it wasn't a female enough. So it's whatever the, the, you know, diversity du jour is before it was women Remember, a couple of years ago, it was women, women, women. And now it's, you know, diversity, diversity, diversity. So it, it's, it's whatever it's going to be. And then come next week, it'll be something else. Yeah, um, that's the thing. It's always, it's always got to be more, 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 and, and it uh, changes quick. I mean, by the time they get these shows made, it's, it's already onto something else. It's already last, last uh, right. season's and flavor. Like, and yeah. publishing is even worse than, than than TV and and movies. Well, people wonder why you know in in mainstream publishing, New York publishing, why it seems like there are a whole lot of books coming out at approximately the same time with the same kind of themes. And it's usually because they're buying these books like two or three years yeah, ahead of time. and that was what was in. Yeah, and that's the memo going around. Buy books like this. So this is a firsthand example of how current year, it's not even quality that determines whether or not a show is going to get produced and picked up. It's got to be the right kind of show preferably by the right kind of people. Starring the right kind of people. Starring the right kind of people. And it's never going to be enough. Ironically enough, the woman making the call on all of this is a white woman. Right. And the thing is, <laughs> now, I mean, it's ABC has decided, but she's the chairman. Yeah. So, and Hollywood has made this huge push that I guess if you want to be up for awards, you have to play by these new rules. And look, I am 100% on board with uh, making things more diverse and making sure that, you know, there's a lot of people who are underrepresented. And I do think that's true. And I think that there, you know, we definitely need more diversity in things. But I remember as a kid, there was a hell of a lot of diversity then, but, you know, they're just inventing it again now. You know what's so weird about this is they're talking about the uh, the ratio of, of diverse people versus white people uh, on the shows. And I remember as a kid watching and seeming like there were more, uh, quote unquote, black shows uh -huh. back then that were almost entirely black casts back then in the 70s and 80s and even the early 90s than there are now. Well, even even just a few years ago, I'm thinking the shows the kids watched, they've been diverse. Like it's all these Disney shows, Disney Channel shows and these shows with kids, there's a whole bunch of them that they love, like, you know, Ant Farm and all yeah, that. Yeah. They were really diverse. I mean, I don't understand the issue. Uh, the issue is we need the social media clout. We yeah. need to look like we're doing something, that we're being proactive and uh, you know, hey guys, you know, like you were saying before, don't don't cancel me. Yeah, don't, don't cancel. cancel don't. The whole thing is just don't cancel us. Don't cancel us, Twitter. And you know, Twitter is so toxic that Disney passed on and buying it. Yeah, they were going to buy Twitter in I think it was 2015 or 2016. And Bob Iger was asked about, and he said that I am not buying Twitter because it's a toxic cesspool. It's worse now. Yeah, it's worse now than it was then because we have all the the runoff from Tumblr mm -hmm. on Twitter. And, uh, you know, we're seeing in real time how quickly people get canceled uh, for any infraction. Even, even if it's something stupid because somebody somebody's offended on Twitter. Who cares? Grow up. But, you know, this woman, she admits uh, flat out that they get real written, written things and they pass on it, which is good for places like Netflix and to be other places that are picking up shows right and left. I suggest you take your shows there. Yeah, so we're going to talk about that. We do talk a lot about Disney. We talk a lot about movies and pop culture. And this is the big conversation going on right now in pop culture is, you know, I guess uh, uh, activism dictating the content. Uh, that that mm -hmm. seems to be the biggest discussion ever. That never ends right well. Now. Uh, usually it doesn't end well. I mean, was that that show called Chad or whatever? That's oh my god, I was joking. How did it even get made? Horrible reviews. Yeah, because you know that's okay when it's them. Yeah. Then you can you know gender bet you you can play it, have a girl playing a dude, but you can't do it. You know uh, on a show they like they can do it, but other shows you can't do that because that's that's just you only can play in your own lane. Yeah. So this is sort of the uh, the unified theory of everything now, and guys, we've talked about this a lot. You know, on the the, the back end of publishing and TV shows, we've optioned shows 
Uh, we've we've tried to you know break into the mainstream publishing scene. We've kind of seen the behind the scenes stuff that goes on, and what we're seeing now is is like the uh, manifest of everything that's been put in play for the last you know six, seven, eight years mm-hmm. now. That now they're flat out saying. Yeah, you know, before it was kind of kind of uh, unstated. It's like your your show or your comic or whatever needs to be X Y Z things. Preferably, you are an X Y Z kind of creator, uh, and they will not tell you that to your face because you ask them specifically what's wrong with it. Why are you not picking this up? And they usually they'll dance around the issue. Mm-hmm. But the reality is, is you creator are not diverse enough or right. you're series isn't diverse and enough. that one stuff fails because you know it maybe it's not that good but they picked it up because it was diverse um then they'll blame you know people they'll call people names because it yeah. can't be because maybe this wasn't a very good show you can have both you can have well-written shows that are diverse you can just make some changes it's not that hard so before we get into this any further give us a sub if you haven't done so already One hundred eighty-five thousand of you are subscribed mm-hmm. uh thank you for the support this article is coming from the daily mail UK, it's actually been all over the place. Yeah, this is one of several. This is this is verifiable. This is what she said. This is uh, Dana Walden, the chairman of entertainment for Disney, uh, during a, a seminar, a panel called Women in Focus, Women, Big Tech, and the Future of Hollywood. Flat out said, we've gotten some really, really good stuff, but we didn't pick it up because it wasn't diverse enough. Mm-hmm. Um so last year, they talked about how ABC called for at least 50% representation of underrepresented groups. Well, who decides who's underrepresented? Um, yeah, that's a, that's a valid point. Because it's only race, it's only certain types of racism that we're allowed to, to, to you know, perpetuate. Yeah, in regular and recurring characters. Now, they actually passed on a show about a white family, but it had a very diverse cast of friends and neighbors. That wasn't good enough. Uh, they passed. Now, it's so weird because I remember... Um, reading about, like I said, you know, fresh off the boat, I, I, I believe they had a hard time getting that made. Yeah, that, that is such a good show. You know, because they were kind of like, or is white America ready for an all Asian family? I thought it was a funny show. You know, and now it's the opposite. It's like, well, you know, not, not enough uh, non-white people. And we know that's what they're saying. When they mm-hmm. say they want diversity, they want non-white. They don't want non- white guys. They don't want white guys. That's uh, what they're saying. I'm just going to translate for you. They didn't want white guys a couple of years ago. Again, this comes from ABC. They fly out, you know, passed on Sylvester Stallone, Dolph Lundgren, which would have been money in the bank, an mm-hmm. action show with these two guys. Money in the bank, and they passed on it because they're like... But at the time, their mandate was female-led. Female-led. Mm-hmm. And now it's... it's uh, and Now it's uh, diverse. Uh, it's diversity plus. And then another year it'll be some other bullshit. And then a year after that it'll be something else different. Diversity plus ultra. Yeah. <laughs> you know, right. it's like it's not enough. Um, Eventually we'll get to just making good shows for, you know, because they're good. Yeah. So this is what, what she said during this panel. She said, I'll tell you for the first time we received some incredibly well-written scripts that did not satisfy our standards in terms of inclusion. And we passed on them. Then she talks about that show pitch with the white family that even though they were friends, the family friends that were not white, it wasn't good enough. Pass. That's not going to get on the air anymore because that's not what our no, audience uh-uh. wants. Bullshit. This is not what you, what Twitter and the, who you're pandering to want. And then, like I said, when it doesn't do well, you're going to blame everybody else and say it's their fault because they're istafos instead of, you know, because maybe the show wasn't that good. And now the show might be incredibly good because it's diverse. But when the fact that you're focusing on diversity and not on good story tells me all I need to know. Yeah, I'm just sitting there thinking 70s. We had Jefferson's, mm-hmm. we had good times, we had what's happening. Yeah, it's uh, like you guys are like 70s. decades earlier out, did you? I know. They were almost all black. I think the shows were all black. We had, you know, in Living Color, Jim Carrey was like the only white guy on the show, uh, you know, in the 90s. And, and uh, it's just like, yeah, what are we doing? You know, uh, Cosby Show. You know, different yeah, world. You're allowed. You're, you're, they're just inventing it now. So <laughs> they're now, just all inventing you know, it. Right you're now. all inventing it now. Cosby Show, the biggest, the biggest sitcom of the 1980s, was the Cosby Show. Mm-hmm. Predominantly, I'm trying to think if there were any white people in the like Cosby. If they were, they were side characters. Right, but you know, they you know, Disney. It's okay. Disney's here to invent it. Everybody watched the Cosby Show. Didn't matter what color you were. Everybody watched the Cosby Show. That's not what our audience wants, though. Yeah, no, that's not what you want. We that's don't not want, the same thing. We don't want good shows. That's not a reflection of our audience. That's not a reflection of our audience. I feel good about the direction we're moving. Well, who is your audience now? Yeah, ABC? who is your audience? Like, give us a breakdown who actually bought watches ABC and Disney Plus and stuff like that. 
Uh, the guidelines announced by ABC also include meaningful integration of underrepresented groups and overall themes and narrative. What? Oh, in other words, they're going to make whatever the trending movement the time is, they're going to put it in their narratives and themes. These shows are going to age so badly. Yeah. They're all going to age so badly. Like, it's you look at some sitcoms from the 70s or 80s, and they're very much a, a product of their time. I'd say Family Ties is one. Because you basically had, you know, hippie culture against the the Reagan era. Mm -hmm. And it all looks weird now watching it because it was such a product of its time. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I love Family Ties, but it hasn't aged as well as, say, The Cosby Show or Cheers. Right, and that's what this is going. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Shows in ABC's lineup currently appear to be already already specifically addressing diversity with titles like Blackish. And other spinoffs, Mixed-ish, and what's the other one? Grown-ish, and... Yeah, uh, there's a lot of grown-ish. Ish-ish. They should just have ish-ish. Yeah, I'm like, (laughs) whatever. (laughs) Though other shows like The Connors and The Goldbergs have largely white casts. Uh, The Connors, you know, without, of course, Roseanne. Yeah, because (laughs) that one counts because they, you know, they They got rid of the one person they didn't like that they thought was too far one way to make sure that it went the way they wanted it to. Goldberg's is just in the 80s, so they really don't, you know, it was more a play on the time period. Uh, In January, ABC announced a new show called Home Economics with with, uh, Topher Grace, which actually looked okay. I saw the trailer for it. But again, they're they're calling out that it had a predominantly white cast, even though um, I think his sister, if I remember, I haven't watched the show, but I saw the trailer, her sister's gay and married to a black woman. Oh my God, wait, wait. She also announced that they're going to have, Disney's going to announce a new, you know, buy POC programming initiative at Hulu. Um, okay. You know what? I got to tell you, a lot of people that are Native American don't like being called indigenous. Just saying. Um... So here we go. Uh, yeah, so it's going to be run by Tara Duncan, blah, blah, blah. Uh, we have we have to step out there aggressively and make it happen. Well, you can't make people watch your shit. I'm sorry. You can make this stuff, and it might be good. And if it's good, people will watch it. That's just it. If you would focus on good stories that happen to have diverse casts, people would probably watch it. But all you're doing is you're trying to make it all diverse and timely and, and, and you know, focused on these, you know, whatever movements are happening right now. And you're trying to do that instead of focusing on just a, a, a you know, evergreen show that people are going to like in general. You're too busy trying to, to, to dictate to everybody what they should and shouldn't think and call them names they don't agree with you instead of actually just doing good damn shows that happen to be diverse. Yeah. So it's like basically what's coming down to and what they're, they're telling you is if it comes down to picking a really well-written show or picking up something like Chad... Mm-hmm. You know, uh, Chad is going to get greenlit because Chad is diverse. You know, her comment, I think, is actually super, super insulting. And I'll tell you what, not to, to white people. It's insulting to people that aren't white. Because basically, we got some really well-written scripts that were done by white people, but they lack diversity. Yeah. I'm like, you can't tell me. You cannot tell me that you haven't seen some incredibly well-written scripts that were done by other people that weren't white. You know, um, that maybe they have white characters and you didn't like that or something. But you can't tell me that it's all you're only been passing on well-written scripts that were white. I'm like, you guys are just kind of making your own issue here. Well, I mean, this is the same mindset that, that you know, the BBC has where they're they're attacking Idris Elba mm-hmm. and Luther because they're like, he's not black enough. I'm I like, mean, they're trying to be supportive, but they're actually being very... Um, demeaning Con- yeah. and yeah condescending and douchey like well we got some we we showed them we got some incredibly well-written scripts we passed because they're white well why don't just mention the incredibly well written scripts you picked up that happen to have diverse cast you could have worded it that way or presented it that way and not ever brought in that we passed on good people because they're white and you would have no issue right now yeah, because how it comes across, and I wasn't really thinking about that, but how it does come across is, you know, yeah, we had some really well-written stuff, and then we had, well, we had the, the token the stuff shows. we picked up because they had diversity. I'm like, this was really written <laughs> shit. Like, like, her, her wording on this was stupid the whole way around. Like, she yeah. could have just come up there and said, hey, we're trying to make sure there's more people, cut more, more seats at the table. We're trying to get some more diversity in there. So we're looking for really, really good shows that happen to have diversity in the cast and or in, in the in the way it's written. And we've gotten some really great shows pitched to us with that. You could have said that. You would have got the same thing across. <laughs> like Instead, one. you got, we got a bunch of really good shows, but they were done by white people and had white people and white people are sucky. <laughs> and so we took whatever <laughs> shit lady. we got left over because that was diversity. Yeah, I would wonder. I mean, I got to tell you, if I were a diverse show, runner 
Uh, with comments I'm like, insulted. I would, I would wonder, did I get hired because my stuff was actually good or did I just happened to be the right kind of person in the right place at the right time? Because the way it's written, it sounds like ABC passed on well-written scripts because they didn't have diversity. They aren't talking about all the well-written scripts they got that had diversity written by diverse people. It's very insulting when you think about it. It it's is. Like, it white is. woman is kind of being low-key racist. Maybe well, she's all right. Maybe she's all right. Oh, my <laughs> God. Maybe that she's... was a joke, of course. I don't actually think she's all right. Oh, my God. She's probably DMing Gina Carano on the down low. That's right. Because <laughs> uh, all those white women, they all think a lot. Well, because, you know, they rejected Sylvester Stallone's pitch because, you know. Yeah, right. At the time, it had nothing to do with the fact about this alt-right bullshit. It was because it was a dude. But, you know. Yeah, that was that was back then. That was then. two years ago when, when women were the thing. Well, Tim Allen's made comments to that effect, too, with Disney. Now, it's very curious. I'm just going to bring this up since we're talking yeah, about Yeah, I know what you're going with this. Yeah. Sylvester Stallone. A couple things here. One, Sylvester Stallone made the news recently because they tried to say that he joined uh, Mar-a-Lago. And uh, it turned out that that was not true. He actually, But a lot of the media places ran with it. They ran with it. Wasn't it. True. The trusted media guys, the ones that you'll get, that will get promoted on YouTube. Now, he is a conservative, though. Mm -hmm. uh, Stallone is actually most of those. Is Dolph Lundgren a conservative? I believe so. Oh, okay. Mo I honestly don't know or don't care. I Yeah. You know, it's funny because I never thought about celebrities politics until the last couple of years, unless they were really obnoxious about it, like Barbara Streisand. But Sylvester Stallone, most of those 80s action stars, it turns out they're conservative. Uh, Carl Weathers is conservative. Uh, Sylvester Stallone, conservative. I don't really um, matter no it so doesn't I don't understand like i don't really care if somebody's really far leftist i don't care as long as they're not obnoxious as long as you're not obnoxious you're doing your job and you're doing good work and you're not making it all about that all the time because people are just sick and tired of hearing it i honestly don't care most people didn't until recently but yeah you had you know arnold schwarzenegger obviously uh mm -hmm. republican governor we had uh you know bruce willis is... but that's why we're getting rid of them all because they're all yes. toxic that's <laughs> where i was going with this um i think on some level, since the wheels have already been kind of put in motion, I think what is going on is they're finding a technical reason to oust people they don't agree so with. So it's okay to be ageist, racist, um, you know, politic. You 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 pick based on politics, whether they claim they're not. You're allowed to dis you're allowed to discriminate publicly discriminate as long as it's uh, you know according to you know your beliefs. But if you do it in reverse, oh my god. I, I think for the longest time, this was sort of, you know, like a low key thing that was going on. Now, again, another another conservative star who's kind of where where is he at right now with with Disney is Tim Allen. Uh, Tim Allen, you know, he had his show dropped uh, from Disney. I believe his last show was dropped. Oh, last Man Standing. Last Man Standing. And then it got picked up by Fox. And then the new show he has, the Tool Time. Uh, oh, Assembly Required. Assembly Required is on another. Network. Yeah, my parents love that one. It's actually really cool. It has nothing to do with politics. It's about building shit. But he's also been ousted from the role of Buzz Lightyear. Yeah, I was. I thought that's where you were gonna go with that because the yes. new Lightyear movie. Yes. Um, he's no longer. He's not voicing the character. Very curious to not have Tim Allen, who originated the role, not voice. Buzz Lightyear. Now they'll say because this is supposed to be based on the movie that the toys are based but on. But when you have a toy that speaks, it has the same damn voice as the actor in the movie. But then we had Buzz Lightyear and Star Command, which was supposed to be the show that the toy was based on. So look, they're just looking for a reason to, I believe, to get Tim Allen out the door and get Chris Pine in because Chris Pine is agreeable. He, and he goes with what they want. Yeah, yeah. and that's why they, they, you know, if it's not because of age, because they still let uh, Woody be voiced by um, Tom Hanks, yeah. you know, it has nothing to do with the age. Yeah, they love so, Tom Hanks. So. Yeah, so it's just, this, this whole this whole bias bullshit is what I'm sick and tired of. And I'm just, I'm just like someone in the middle looking at this and being like, this is bullshit. <laughs> you know, I'm like, I may not agree with your political opinion, but I don't think it has anything to do with you, how you can do your job. But I mean, again, guys, just to reiterate, these are, this is what we've been telling you for the last couple of years on the channel. This is what's going on in publishing. This is what's going on in TV. And now to actually have a head of ABC come out flat out say this is what's going on and which is still like is insulting they could have worked she could have worked oh, yeah, it so yeah. many different ways that would have been and it, but there wouldn't have been drama around it you wouldn't have been white knight you wouldn't have been getting the high fives you wouldn't have been like look what we look we're passing on white people stuff you know because they're trying to get like you know like yeah that's right oh you go and all you did was basically insult all the people like you know we passed on the really well written good stuff so yeah yeah 
That's a really bad, it's a bad look for the network too, because it's kind of like, yeah, we're just putting crap on. Maybe the network should just fix the problem by getting rid of the white woman. That is a problem. Why is this white woman? If they were truly about diversity for, standards yeah. and making sure that things were fair. And they were looking and, and they were trying to you know, show that they were doing more than 50%, you know, underrepresented groups. They wouldn't have a white woman in charge at ABC. Why does she get to be the boss? That's right. All right, we're going to wrap it up. Yep. Okay, so please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk to you later. Bye.